Hello again, YouTube. I apologize for not having a video last weekend, but unfortunately I was on a business trip. I brought along a portable camera hoping to make some sort of video there, but I simply didn't have enough time. But to make up for that, today we're going to have a four-part exciting video about Polaroid automatic land cameras. So what is a Polaroid automatic land camera? Well, it's actually what Polaroid produced prior to these. Obviously this is our very common Polaroid 600 camera, very popular in the 1980s and 1990s. And before that, of course, there's the SX-70 series, which are characterized by the really cool folding action. And these two cameras produce images that look like this. Now, before Polaroid invented this characteristic image where it comes out of the front of the camera and then develops before your eyes, they actually had a different type of film, which looks like this. And it's called pack film or type 100 film. Now, of course, Impossible Project makes film for these cameras. And for these cameras, actually, we have Fujifilm, who makes this one, and this one recently they stopped making, unfortunately. So I wanted to talk to you today about these Polaroid automatic lane cameras, all the different flavors of them, how to shoot them, and what these films look like, and where to find these films, and how long you can expect to enjoy this photography in the future. So I've got three cameras here that I'll go through each in order. We have the uh, cheaper series, which is the uh, color pack series of cameras. We have the 100 series, 100, 200, 300, 400 series, which are quite fancy because they have a bellows, which makes them very compact to carry. And finally, if you uh, are a real enthusiast, you have the big boy, the Polaroid 600 SE, also colloquially known as the Polaroid Goose. So, I'm going to bring the camera up so we can inspect the film closer, and then I'll separate out three additional videos for the three cameras I have. So, enjoy! Alright guys, now we're going to talk about the film. So, Fujifilm still produces this film, the FP100C and what this basically stands for is it's C for color film and 100 for 100 ISO. Now recently discontinued as of uh, 2014 is Fujifilm FP3000B which is obviously black and white film and it's 3000 ISO which is pretty crazy. Um, you're probably wondering why they had such a high ISO well, actually, that was something that Polaroid even used originally when Polaroid was trying to make these cameras easier and easier to use. Obviously, one thing he wanted people to not worry about is focusing. And so, what's one way? Before the electronics existed to even make autofocus possible, how could you possibly make it very easy to focus? Well, quite simple. You have a super high ISO film and then you have a very small aperture on your lens. So you don't have to worry about focusing. Basically everything will be in focus. And this principle is behind the original development of the 3000 speed black and white film. But in later years it became useful for many reasons. Um, these Polaroid pack films became extremely important in scientific work. I used to work in some scientific research labs and I still saw electron microscopes and even some optical microscopes with a little mount on the back of it where you could insert this film. Basically these pack films even after the newer integrated films were invented were still quite useful for industrial and scientific purposes and that's probably why Fujifilm has produced it for so long even after Polaroid has gone bankrupt because I think some people in some countries may still have equipment that requires these to uh, kind of take images of what you're doing. 
I've seen them on oscilloscopes as well to take photos of your oscilloscope screen before they had digital oscilloscopes. Anyways, this black and white film is out of date now. Um, pretty much the last batch of it expired at the end of 2014. However, if you keep it refrigerated, not frozen, refrigerated, then it'll last for many, many years to come. In fact, in one of my Polaroid cameras here, I have some 3000 speed film which expired in 1992, and you're, I am still able to get some image on it. It's not great, but this black and white film seems to last a long time, expired even longer than this color film. Anyways, these are your two options. So you have your low speed color, your high speed black and white. Um, there's plenty of this film still around. Um, you can buy it for, for you know, 15 to $20 a pack. The color film, of course, is still being manufactured. It's still fresh and ready to go. It, um, you can even get this on Amazon, and occasionally you'll see it on Amazon for maybe like $8.50 a pack. So $8.50 for 10 instant pictures is quite a good deal. Anyways, I'm going to um, rip this one open just to show you what's inside and how to load these cameras. So inside there's a foil pouch. And inside the foil pouch is the film pack. Now this pack film is a bit more intensive than just uh, the more modern Polaroid where you just slot the cartridge into the camera and it works great. This requires a few steps and I'd like to show you that um, right now. So just for the argument's sake I'm going to take this camera and I'm going to open the back. Now the primary difference between the pack film and the other films is that a lot more of the camera is exposed to the user. Over here is where the film actually comes out of the camera. And you can see there's all these warnings here. If I can zoom in. That tell you to make sure to clean your rollers. This isn't integrated, unlike, unlike these photos where there's this plastic sheet on top of your image and there's all the chemicals protected inside. The chemicals can leak out of the side of the photos of these. So on this camera, for example, you can push this red tab up here and kind of flip the rollers out of the camera you can see I purposely left the gunk in here so you can see what it looks like. Focus on that. All right. So these are the chemical residue on each side as the picture comes out the middle of these two rollers which spin. So indeed make sure you clean the rollers. If you don't you may rust them and if you're buying a used pack camera most important thing to check is if your rollers are rusty or pitted if they're nice and shiny or um, if there's residue on it but the residue hasn't rusted into the metal yet then you're in good shape but again make sure you look at and clean your rollers between packs and cleaning the rollers is quite simple usually I just take a damp paper towel or if it's already dry you can just pick it off like this Obviously make sure to dry the rollers before you put a new pack of film in. Anyways, I'll show you how to load this now. So put those rollers back in. And now what you're going to do is you can see on the pack of film, there is this side where the photos are actually stacked up behind this black piece of paper. So don't put any pressure there. You want this side to go into the camera and there's a little notch that you tuck the pack in so you tuck it in there and then you push it down on this side that's it it should be pretty easy to do next thing is usually in these packs 
you know, it's been crammed inside that tiny box for a few years, so these are all bent. What you'll want to do is just, without pulling them, make sure that these white tabs and this big black tab are all going to kind of stick out of the camera. Then you close the back of the camera. Now if you see on the side of the camera, that big black tab, problems with my autofocus here today, sorry about that, all right. This big black tab sticks out of the camera. You need to very carefully, without yanking, gently pull it out. So now your film inside is revealed and ready to shoot. And you can throw this out. Now you can see uh, there's actually some interesting origami going on. There's um, each of these white tabs in the camera is connected to the previous one. And the first one is connected to the black paper. So each time you take a picture, you simply pull out the next tab and the next picture's tab reveals itself automatically. I'm not going to do that with this camera. I'm going to switch over for a second to the um, Polaroid 600 SE, the massive camera that barely fits in the frame, because I already took a picture on this and I need to pull the photo out now. So again, to eject your photo after you've taken the photo, you simply grab the tab and you pull it straight out of the camera and it'll rip off, that's normal. As I said, you can see the next tab has automatically revealed itself and this big tab has automatically come out of the camera in this second slot. This is actually your photo now. So all you do with this is you pull it all the way out of the camera again. And this is uh, really long, so make sure you have enough room. And just keep pulling. And that's it. So now your camera is ready for the next photo. And here's the image that I've pulled out. There are several uh, key components to this image. This is where I pulled it out. All of this wax papery material on either side is uh, just going to be trash at the end, but it's a material that's carried the chemicals in. The chemicals are actually stored under here. One of the most important things with this type of film is the time. If you look here, There's a little chart, and the chart tells you, depending on the outside temperature, how long you have to wait for your image to be done. So in here, it is currently 70 degrees. So I'm going to have to wait about two minutes or 120 seconds, as it says right here, until my photo is done. Now, the good news is you can wait longer. Feel free to wait longer. This is just the minimum amount of time. The old Polaroid film, this time was extremely important and you actually had to peel it before, or you had to peel it exactly at this amount of time. And if it was color, it would change the color tone of your image if you pulled it too soon or too late. The Fuji film, pack film, is self-terminating. What that means is this is a guide for the minimum amount, but going above that doesn't affect your image significantly. So again, you have to patiently wait, in my case, two minutes. Also on here, just to watch out for, the chemicals are pushed from here across the image to here. So the excess chemicals are here. You can see it's actually damp. Try to avoid touching the chemicals. Uh, they're I don't know if they're slightly acidic or slightly basic, but certainly they're not something you want to get on your skin too much. 
So I would say avoid touching this part of the image over here and instead carry this around by the big flap that they've provided you. Okay, I want to be honest here. I made a big mistake and I didn't time this. So I don't know if it's been a full two minutes, but I'm going to peel it anyway. This is actually your photo here face down, this dark gray. And on another side note, each photo has a number on it so you know which out of your 10 frames you're on. And each tab is printed with the same number as you pull it out. Right, I'm going to peel it now. All right, as you can see, I took a photo of my uh, setup here with all the cameras. Now, you can see on this side, you're thinking, oh, I can see a little bit of the image again. And yes, you can. Um, while this dries, so just so you know, these are going to be wet. So when you peel the image off, only hold it by the white border. And this whole area is all goopy and gross with the same chemicals. So definitely wait for both of these to dry. Give them at least five minutes and then it's probably safe to touch. Though the image, if you want to avoid uh, fingerprints on it, I'd say at least wait 15 minutes to a half hour before you go touching the front of this image. But in any case, now that we have our photo, uh, if you want it to dry, you can actually shake it. Yes. You know how they say shake it like a Polaroid picture? Well, this is actually what you're supposed to shake. Unlike these, which you shouldn't shake because then you might put cracks in the emulsion, these, it's perfectly fine to shake to let them dry. And this is probably where that uh, pop song lyric came from. So that's really it with the film aspect of land camera photography. This side of the image, the negative, can be thrown out or once it dries, you can actually treat this black part with a bleach solution and get a working negative of your photo, which is really cool. Um, there's some other videos on YouTube instructing you how to do that, so I won't repeat what they've talked about. So with the color, it looks like that. Um, since I'm trying to store this black and white film to use on a rainy day, I'm not going to uh, open it right now. But what's cool about the black and white film is when you peel it, this side turns into a negative automatically. No other chemical treatment possible. And that was, of course, because since this was used for scientific purposes, you immediately get two copies of your image, one to send off to get published and one to keep in your lab records. So again, this black and white produces a negative and a positive. The color produces a positive and this will turn black over time. But you can turn this back into a negative by treating this black area with bleach. So that's about it with the uh, logistics of shooting this film. In the next multiple parts of this series, I hope you'll join me where I talk about the three major types of Polaroid pack cameras you can buy. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions.